By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to Timmy Talks, the channel where we play old school magic. And today I am playing a game of X points. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm playing against Yur, and he's bringing a blue and white control deck to the table. And I am battling him with my Elementals Volt deck. It's red, it's blue, and it's got a lot of Elementals because I love casting them, you know, and that's exactly what I'm planning to do here. Now, before I jump into the deck deck section of this video, I would first like to point out that we are playing according to the X points rules. That means Atlantic is, uh, we're, we're following the Atlantic rule set. So we have Fallen Empires, we have Mana Burn, um, and we also have only one Strip Mine, but four Mishra's Workshops. And of course, we have the X points point system. Here you see that point system. Now, if you wanna know more about all the ins and outs about the rules, please check out the description below. And in that description below, you can also find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So you can click on there if you wanna go straight to the games. And here I am going to continue with the deck decks. And I'm starting with the deck of my opponent. Let's take a look at yours control deck. And here we see the control deck of your, so this is blue and white, and this is really uber control, isn't it? I mean, look at this list, four Wrath of Gods. I think this deck really wants to abuse the Wrath of God. Wrath of God, two white and two, uh, buries all creatures, meaning you cannot regenerate. Um, and this is really good in this deck because he's not really playing with any creatures. Um, he is playing with Jade Statue and he's playing with Mishra's Factories. And what these cards have in common is you can make them creatures, but if you don't do that, they're just, you know, a Mishra's Factory is just a land and a Jade Statue is just an artifact. So when you cast your Wrath of God and you haven't animated these cards, then, you know, they don't get destroyed by the Wrath. So with this deck, you really can play a one-sided Wrath of God all the time. You destroy all the creatures of your opponent and then after that if you want to you can attack with your Mishra's Factory or Jade Statue it's all good you know it has no effects for you and then if we look at the rest of the deck we see of course the counter spells we see disenchants we don't see swords to plowshares I guess because he's already playing with Wrath of Gods I can imagine that some players even want to add one or two swords to this list even though they're already for uh a Wrath of Gods in there. The main reason to do that would be if you're playing against a really low to the ground, quick creature deck, then you want to have, you know, some weapons against those early threats. For example, like a mono green deck, you know, it would be quite nice to have some sorts in there. And uh, when I'm looking at the rest of the deck, I notice that Jam Day Tomes go really well with the uh, control strategy. You know, you want to have full control and then slowly draw more cards in your opponent. That's definitely going to give you the win. We also see a balance in here, which is super good with all those artifacts. Remember, balance doesn't count artifacts in. So it's really good to play with a lot of artifacts if you play with uh, with a balance. We see some Thalwar Stones for Ram that makes uh, absolute sense. We also see a Nova Pentacle, which is really good in a creatureless deck. I mean, look at it. It is, it is really sweet, and I think it's really good in this build. I'm actually hoping, Yur, that you can use your Nova Pentacle. That would be super cool. We also see uh, four copy artifacts, and they're quite good. You know, he can copy his books. He can copy his Icy Manipulators. He can also copy his Jade Statues for some extra uh, pressure. So, yeah, I think I think this deck, it's looking, it's looking quite good. It's looking quite strong, really a traditional control deck. Now, let's take a look at my deck, Blue Red Elementals. And here we see my deck. So the deck is back Elementals Volt. I mean, I got to laugh a little because there, there have been quite some episodes with this deck. So I hope I'm not boring you with it, but I'm just really enjoy playing with Elementals. I love casting them. Sometimes the deck wins, sometimes it loses, but it always brings a smile on my face. So what this deck wants to do, right? An Elemental, an average casting cost of an Elemental is five mana. So I'm playing with Mana Volts. My, my ideal scenario is turn one mana vault and then turn two play like air elemental earth elemental you know get full pressure on my opponent from the get-go i can also uh, choose to play a little bit more conservatively a bit more controlling and um, wait till i've got counter backup so i can play an elemental and have a counter spell to back it up it depends on what type of deck i'm playing against and basically if i'm feeling lucky or not <laughs> that's that also plays a plays a role in my decision making now if we look at the rest of the deck it's got a lot of elements of your traditional counter burn deck right four counter spells else for lightning bolts i'm also playing blood moon i'm playing energy flux i think energy flux can be really good in this matchup because we just saw yours deck it's full of artifacts so he's not going to love the energy flux i'm also playing an extra energy flux main so that's def uh, sideboard i mean so it's definitely going to come in after game one i'm also playing with flash fires in the sideboard that's a card that i can actually use against this deck i mean it's kind of evil because it destroys all planes but um yeah i'm hoping to actually use it 
after game one. But I am a little bit worried about the Wrath of Gods because, you know, my deck tends to really like just put multiple elementals out and that kind of makes it perfect for um, for your to kind of use his Wrath of God against that. So I really need to make sure that I can counter that away or that I just play one elemental at a time. Then again, he's also playing with Jade Statue, which is a perfect blocker for most of my elementals because most of them don't fly and they're not big enough to kill uh, the statue. The statue's got six toughness. So that's another thing. Maybe I can combine like a hit from a fire elemental or earth elemental with the bolt and kill a jade statue that way. So these are things that are kind of, you know, probably going to go through my mind while I play this game. Do remember, of course, I said this before, before we start the game, we don't know what decks we have. So for me, for example, when I'm now playing Yur, now that I've seen the list, I know he's not playing with uh, swords to plowshares but as soon as I see a white mana, I, I always expect swords to plowshares. So I'm definitely going to try to um, you know, play around Swords to Plowshares, uh, ev even though he's not even playing with one. So it's going to be interesting to see if there's a certain point in the game where I realize, hey, he's not playing with Swords, he's full on on Wrath of God, because that could matter. That could mean that maybe I play out my Elemental a little bit early and then keep Counter Magic up really for those wraps. So I wonder if that's something that I'm going to see as the game develops. But I guess, I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm playing blue and red, my elementals deck, starting here with a mana vault. That's what I want to do with this deck, passing the turn to Nether Shadow, and also known as a Yur. And he's playing blue white control. So he wants to take full advantage of his Wrath of Gods in this build. And uh, there's another island. Let's see if I'm going to play a water elemental or air elemental. I mean, it is risky. I decide not to because of that white mana, right? Because that could represent a source. And if I play out like a water elemental, tap down my mana vault, and he then plays a swords on it, you know, that's not a good position to be in. Passing the turn, it seems, no, he's not. He's going to disenchant my mana vault here. I'm not going to counter, so accepting this. Playing a volcanic, so I'm really playing it quite slow. And passing the turn. So Yurian's deck is really built around Wrath of God strategies. He's playing with four Mishra's Factories and Jade Statues and stuff. And there we see a Mishra's Factory. Of course, I cannot counter it. I am playing, however, with Lightning Bolts. So it is going to be risky for Yur to animate them. There's another Plains. He's going to tap four. There's a Gem Day Tome and there's a Counter Spell. Yeah, Gem Day Tome's quite risky, of course, because it means card advantage. I don't want that to happen. Now I'm going to go to 5. I wonder if I'm going to tap out here to play an Elemental. I am not just passing the turn again. There's mana number 5 here. He's going to tap 4. Again, he's got a lot of 4 casting cost. Artifacts in his deck. Another counter spell. So it looks like I'm keeping a handful of counter spells here. And Yuri, I'm playing with IC Manipulators, Jam Day Tomes, Jade Statues, of course. All those artifacts costs four to cast, so four is really an important number for him. Tapping down five here, there's a Water Elemental. And now the question is, does, your, um, does he have a Wrath of God and does he want to play it? We'll just have to wait and see. There's a Felwer Stone. He's going to tap four for a book. I'm tapped out, cannot counter it. So I'm going to untap, but remember now I can deal 5 points of damage. Water Elemental is a 5-4, so that is really a big chunk of his life. A quarter of his life gone now with one hit by the Water Elemental. So he's dropping here to 15. I'm playing a Mana Vault. I could here use the Mana Vault to cast another Elemental with Counter Backup. Decide not to. Just pass the turn here. Three cards in hand, it seems. Perhaps it were four, kind of hard to see. Three cards in hand there for uh, Yurian. Yeah, I've got three and my opponent has got three cards as well. You can see that by that white dice there at the bottom of the screen. The question here is, does he want to draw a card? Does he want to play something out? Like a Jade Statue would be quite nice here for, uh, for my opponent. Because Jade Statue, of course, is a 3-6, so he's going to choose to draw another card. Does this mean that he's going to take five more damage next turn? That would like half his life. There's another Plains. Doesn't have enough mana anymore for a Wrath. Okay, there's a Balance. That is not too bad. I wonder if I've got a counter spell and if I'm going to play it here. Both three cards in hand, I believe. 
There is a counter spell though. Countering it away, saving my elemental. And one of the things that Yurk could have done, although I don't know that maybe he drew into the balance, is play the balance first, see if it resolves before he does something else. Anyway, attacking him here again, putting him on 10. Tapping 3. There's an energy flux, and this is annoying for him because he's got a Felwer Stone and a Gem Detomes. He's probably going to let go of the Felwer Stone. I mean, he does have a lot of mana, but it's tough if you have a, this upkeep cost of 2 per artifact. He's going to untap. Now he's got decisions to make. Untap, upkeep. So what is he going to do? So he's going to tap two, use the mana of the Felwer Stone. And he's going to use those two mana to keep his Gem de Tome alive. He's going to animate. It looks like he's going to attack. Now he's going to play a copy artifact. Now, of course, in response, exactly, I can bolt it. So I bolt the factory. That means that he's got to choose another target with the copy artifact, which is not too bad right now because he's got the gem de tome, which is a nice target. On the other hand, it does mean he's got to pay two more mana. So actually, in this situation, it is not a nice target. This is not what you want to happen. You could even consider here targeting the mana vault. Yeah, he's targeting the Mana Vault to draw an extra card. I think this is a good decision. And just let the Mana Vault die next turn by the Energy Flux. So I'm going to untap here, pay two mana for my own Mana Vault. Attack him here with five, put him on, put him on five. Like that Water Elemental is doing a lot of work for me, playing City of Brass. One card in hand. I hope for my sake that that's a Counterspell so I can protect the Water Elemental. So now he's going to untap, he's going to let go of his artifacts, and he's going to draw. And here you can really see how good Energy Flux is against all those artifacts. There is a Strip Mine. He just needs a blocker or a way to get rid of the Water Elemental. He's on 5. There's a Disenchant on the Energy Flux. Probably a card that he just drew into, that's unfortunate. There's a Hercules Recall. But it's not going to do much though. He is dead. He is done for with just one Water Elemental that it was able to defend with the Counterspell. I managed here to win this first game. Wow, what a surprise. And uh, now we're going to dive into our sideboards and we're going to catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So there we see you're starting here with the planes passing the turn. Island into Mana Vault. No, into Soul Ring. Into Mana Vault. Wow. So much mana. I am taking a damage though. We are playing with Mana Burn in this format. But that's a lot of mana. I wonder what I can do with it next turn. Let's see what Yur can do. There's another plane stapping two. There's a Felwer Stone. And a pass turn. Can I find, I can find another blue. The question is, am I going to take the risk here? I didn't see a single swords in the previous game. It looks like I'm going to do it. Going to tap five here to cast a water elemental turn two. So there the water elemental is back that wrecked your in game one. Can I do the same thing in game number two? I don't think I ever saw one water elemental deal 20 points of damage, by the way, which is what happened in game one. That's quite unique for me. And there we see another Felwer Stone into another Felwer Stone. He really needs one of those Wrath of Gods. He's very unfortunate. Hasn't found a single one. Despite the fact that he is playing, of course, with a full playset of Wrath of Gods in his deck. There's another Mana Vault. And of course, an attack with the Water Elemental. So Yur is now on 15. He's got enough mana to cast a Wrath with Counter Backup. There we see a Wrath of God. And now the question is, am I going to play a Counter Spell? I'm not. I'm going to let it happen. I mean, I've got a lot of Elementals in my deck. 
Tapping three. There's, ooh, a disrupting scepter. That is quite good in this control strategy. I wonder if I want to counter this. I am countering the scepter here. So really want to keep the cards in hand, although I only have one. I'm going to drop here to 17. I wonder if I should have countered that, to be honest. But then again, I don't know what that one card is. I mean, for example, at City of Brass, I could have, you know, decide to discard that if your uses his uh, Disrupting Scepter. And now it looks like I'm going to untap my Mana Vault. Now remember, I'm also playing with a little bit of burn in the deck. One Disintegrate, one Fireball, and I believe um, also one Earthquake. Probably boarded out the Earthquake though, but the Mana Vaults in combination with those X Spells can be quite good. So I attacked here with the Air Elemental, and Yur is not doing much. He's not finding anything. He's on 11. Only one card in hand. It's not looking great for him. Oh, there's a huge Fireball. Yeah, I talked about the Fireball, and there it is. The moment I started to untap the Mana Vault, I'm like, hmm, probably have Fireball in hand. That's exactly what happened here. So this is a really, really short game too. But don't worry, we did play a game number three. So stick around for game three. But uh, for now, I'm really happy to, you know, see the Elementals deck win, win a match for a chance. You know, you see it can win. It can win games. Anyway, 2-0 uh, for me. But remember, we are going to play the game three. So stick around. Game number three, here we go. So I'm two matches, two games up already. But of course, we're going to play that third game. And I just feel that, you know, Yur hasn't really been in that comfortable position, right? Starting with an island, passing a turn. Again, I'm finding the Mana Vault. I mean, his deck needs time. He needs to find, like, the right answers to those early creature threats. And that's just really important. He has to be able to kind of at least play a few... Wrath of Gods, get that, you know, card advantage engine going with the Gem Day Tomes. Playing out a Felwer Stone here. I'm going to tap five, going to take two damage. I'm taking really a big risk here. Going to drop to 17. And I'm not sure if I really like this play because if Yur now has a land and a Wrath, I'm going to be in, in big, big trouble because the Mana Vault's going to cost life, but also my City of Brasses are going to cost me life. Oh, are we going to see there's a Wrath? Exactly, yeah. So I think this is... This is a bit cocky. Maybe after you, after winning both games, I'm just so um, overconfident. But this is definitely not a good play by my side of the table. Great play, of course, by your. I'm dropping here to 16. Do I have maybe an energy flux in hand? That would be quite nice. And I can let my own mana vault die. But it looks like I'm really in trouble now. Passing to turn, exactly. So this is great for Yur because even if he does nothing, you know, he deals damage to me because of the Mana Vault that's tapped. And look at those two City of Brasses on my side of the table. Let's see what he can do. Decided to untap again. Perhaps he was considering a Disenchant. It would be a, a bad decision at this point. Another Felwer Stone could be nice. Could even consider stripping something. But he... He hasn't had a land drop yet, so I think he wants to keep the mana from the strip mine for now. Tapping a white, tapping the Felwer Stone. What is he going to do? Playing a balance. Interesting. So he's kind of using a balance now as a mind twist. So I guess I've got a bolt in hand here. So bolting year for three, putting him on 17. Ooh, what is he going to do here? Oh, he's going to take away his own land. He really wants me to, to feel the pain. Oh, uh, to feel the pain of the Mana Vault. Oh, my goodness. This is an interesting strategy, right? He's like, you know what? You're going to kill yourself with your own Mana Vault. I'm going to lose a fork here. I'm going to discard a fork. Three cards in hand. This is really mean, you're... Oh, man. I'm going to drop to 15 and... It looks like I want to change my mind here. Oh, okay. I see what I'm going to do. Okay. I want to fork the bolt, of course. But I need to take two points of damage, right? It should go to 14. Yeah, I think I should have gone to 14 here because I... Tap both my City of Brasses. Anyway, we see a Desert being played by Yurin and Passa. That was, I mean, that was kind of nice. At least I'm able to use the fork, put him on 14. 
play out an island, but I mean, it's not looking great for me. There's a factory. There's a copy on the factory. Counterspell though, so I think that's important because if you can deal even more damage, your turn is gonna be very difficult for me. I'm gonna take more damage from the Volt, drop to 12. Drop to 11. Okay, there's an energy flux. That's actually pretty good because now I can let my own mana vault die so I no longer take the damage. And of course, Jura has to choose if he wants to pay for the Felwer Stone. He is going to play uh, pay for the Felwer Stone. There's another factory. I mean, this is not... This is not too bad. Another flux, though, that is not great. That is not what I'm looking for right now. I mean, it... Probably means, yeah, disenchant on one of the fluxes. I mean, Yur also could have considered just yeah, giving up his, uh, his Felwer Stone. But he is, he is a bit low on mana, I guess. So he really wants to keep the Felwer Stone. And the Felwer Stone represents any type of mana because I've got the City of Brass. He's not attacking. That is a bit of a puzzle for me why he didn't attack there. Because my hand was empty. There's another City of Brass. No cards in hand, just the one energy flux in the past. I'm on 11, Yur is on 14. So this game is, is quite interesting now. It's kind of top deck mode with the problem, of course, that Yur has that pressure of the factories. He's not swinging in though. That is really a big surprise. Maybe he's not realizing that I've got no cards in hand. He can just swing in and start dealing damage. Like now I've got a card in hand that could potentially represent a, uh, a bolt, but then still I think you should take the chances. I would really just swing in here. Exactly. Now he's swinging in. Going to drop to nine. Passing the turn. Playing a mountain. And a pass. I mean, he could... I would just let the Felwer Stone die and just attack for four, to be honest. I mean, then I'm on a three-turn clock. Could, of course, decide to do that next turn when I'm on seven. Animating. And he's going to copy it. That's really his strategy. There's a bolt, though, on the animated factory. So he, he has to choose another target. Can only choose the Felwer Stone. I mean, it's so risky. Copy Artifact Factory can be absolutely fantastic. But you got to know when and how to time it. It's, it's very difficult. And he's going to play another Felwer Stone. Oh, yeah. So he's going to use to keep the man of the factory floating. Okay, that makes sense. And now he's got to pay four for the two Felwer Stones. Actually, the three Felwer Stones. So he's going to keep one alive. This is a tricky situation, but I mean, still good for Yuri. He's got the one factory. Puts me on seven. Just... Um, I don't think I'm finding really the good cards. All I want is a big elemental to put on the board to kind of block the factory with. And you're again paying for the Felwer Stone. I think if you're Yur, what you want to do is just keep attacking. I mean, I'm on seven. Exactly. Just keep swinging with the factory. And I mean, you'll get there. I've got three turns finding a volcanic island. I wonder what I have in hand. I haven't seen a single Blood Moon as well. I mean, Blood Moon is quite good against the factories. Passing the turn here. What do I have? Maybe I've got like Control Magics, although I guess I boarded them out after game one, right? Two cards in hand. Passing the turn here again. Back to your, your attacking. Gonna put me on one. Oh, man. Is he going to kill me here with the factory in game three? Even more lands. What do I have in hand? Another energy flux? Oh, man. Let's hope that this last card, for some weird reason, is a bolt that I just top decked another bolt. Going to pay two again for the Felwer. Oh, he's got to pay four for the Felwer now. Exactly. So he's going to let the Felwer Stone die. That's a good decision. 
I was going to use the one mana to animate it. That makes sense. And nope, I got a counter spell in hand. Ay, 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 ay. That is so unfortunate. Oh, love the eye for an eye there. You're in your deck. That is very cool. Wow. And I think this whole match was kind of interesting. We saw in game one that you couldn't find an answer to the water elemental. And here in this game, I just couldn't find the answer to that one factory. And I couldn't, I couldn't draw into my elementals. That was a bit of a surprise because at a certain point where where I was able to get rid of the mana vault again and we were kind of, both of us were rebuilding, I was like, I'm probably gonna draw into another elemental, right? Because I'm playing with like 12 elementals in my deck. But um, yeah, you have that sometimes, right? That your deck is not providing. It does happen. If you play Magic, you probably know what I'm talking about. Anyway, thank you very much here for this game. Again, a very interesting deck. And it's always nice that I have an excuse to play with my Elementals Vault. I did eventually win this two to one, so that feels kind of good, good for my Elementals confidence. I also would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share, and comment on this video. That's completely free and really helps the channel move forward. Also, please consider subscribe, subscribing, I should say, to this channel if you're not a subscriber yet. If you already are, thank you so much. And then there's one last thing before we go out and go uh, see who the patrons are of this fantastic channel. I want to talk about patreon.com slash Timmy Talks because if you take a look on that website, you can see how you can support uh, how you can support me as a content creator. So please consider becoming a patron. It already starts with $1 a month. And for that contribution, um, you get your name in the end scroll at the end of every single video and you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. So please take a moment to have a look at patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and see how you can support uh, the content, how you can support me, I mean, as a content creator. For now, thank you very much for watching and let's take a look at the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kazing.